This is Eyewitness News at 10. Hello, Katie. I'm Sean Kubner. And I'm Darla Montgomery. Thanks for joining us tonight. The oil spill that was triggered by the loss of the Deepwater Horizon was the worst in this nation's history. And if you ask the state and federal government, they will tell you the worst is over and the Gulf of Mexico is back to normal. Yeah, at least that's what the government's been telling us. But a new report just out has revealed some very disturbing findings. Elevated levels of dangerous chemicals found in the crude oil that came from the Deepwater Horizon is now being found in our blood. Wilma Subra has been testing water and soil samples in Acadiana for four decades, and what she says she sees in this latest study concerns her. Well, I'm very concerned because from the very beginning we've been getting responses from these individuals about how sick they are. Subra is talking about a blood study that was conducted on four males, ages 3 to 43, and one female, age 38, in December of last year. Subra says the results of those tests revealed elevated levels of six toxic and potentially life-threatening chemicals, chemicals associated with crude oil, most notably ethyl benzene, which had been linked to kidney damage and cancer. All right, so what are the chances that the report is all bull, that these people just came forward because they're looking for a check? Well, there are three factors that make that not very likely. First and foremost, these individuals didn't know each other. They come from different walks of life. They come from different communities. In fact, some of the people come from different states. Some of them are from Mississippi. But they all complain about the same health problems. And they all, more importantly, show the same chemicals in their blood. Chemicals that can be traced directly back to the crude oil that came out of the deep water horizon. We know this not from laboratory testing done at one lab here in Acadiana, but from laboratory testing done at three separate labs located across this country. So in short, not one lab knew what the other two labs were working on. The final analysis is these results are not only credible, they're reason for concern. We had no idea. We thought we wouldn't find anything, but we're finding this. Um, in people's bodies and um, of course they're very concerned about their future and their future health and what this means to their families. As the executive director of Lean, Mary Lee Orr is doing all she can to get the word out about these latest results and the health problems her organization says these chemicals pose. Not only to those who have already come forward but those who are still out there and may not realize what they're carrying around as a result of exposure to crude oil from the spill. Chest pains is common, uh, dizziness, respiratory problems, bruising, swelling, things like that. So how are these chemicals from the crude oil getting into people's blood? Well, the scientists say the two most common methods of exposure are either direct contact by skin, you're touching it, or you're breathing in, breathing in the vapors. But ingestion, eating food already contaminated with these chemicals, is another source of contamination that scientists say they have verified. And that's one of the worries that this study is bringing out. We'll have more on just how safe our seafood really is coming up Thursday in Eyewitness News.